Hey, I'm Anne, owner of Champagne and Stars Event Decor. Welcome to And I Like Large Parties. Join me as I chat with amazing women business owners in the events industry, some that I've worked with and some that I can't wait to work with. We'll be sipping cocktails while discussing their passions, hurdles, and accomplishments. You're going to love it. Thanks for listening. Today, I'm sitting down with Danea Jacobs, yes. and she is the owner of Candy Connections. I am. I'm so glad to have you here today. I'm so happy to be here today. She's actually invited me into her home, um, and I got to spend some time with her adorable little boy. So she is a Thanks wife. That, yes, <laughs> she is a wife, and she's a mother, and she's just, she's doing the damn thing. So I'm so glad to be sitting with you. Thanks for having me. Today. Yes. Um, I do want to mention that we are enjoying, because it's conversations and cocktails, we are enjoying a glass of rosé. It's a DD Project Wine, because I know that you won that grant. I do want to I want to get into that a little yeah. bit later, but I thought it was very fitting. Um, rosé, it's a hint of pink. It is. And you know, I, pink is my color. I know it is. Today I didn't wear it, like, I, and I wanted to, but I couldn't like commit to it today. Well, you so look was, stunning. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And I, I did find something pink for you. Which I love. <laughs> I thank you telling- for that. <laughs> I was telling Danea before we started that pink is not my color. I'm usually browns and blacks, but I thought, you know what? Let me let me step it up today for her and wear a little bit of pink. I love it. Um, so what I'd like to do is I just want to start at the um, beginning. Okay. And you're going to tell me, you know, who you are, how you got into the business. But first, okay. I always like to ask my guests yes. if they could come up with a cocktail. It can be something signature that you create. It can be just a drink that you love. It can be non-alcoholic, some beverage of your choice that you feel just really exemplifies your vibe, what you bring to the business or embodies the business itself. What would that drink be? What would it be called? Oh, what would it be and what would it be called? Yes. So you think about it. Okay. I'll give you time. You think about it during the interview. Okay. And then at the end, we'll come back to that. Oh, I love that because that was me putting my thinking cap on. Yes. No, no. Take it off. Okay. 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 You can take it off a little bit. Okay. 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 Yeah. Just at the end. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. At the end, we'll come back to it and I'll give you a little bit of time. I can't wait. Okay. Okay. All right. So tell me who you are. How, how did you get here? How did you get into this business? Okay, awesome. So my name is Danea Jacobs. Thank you for introing me. Mm-hmm. Um, Candy Connections has been in business. It's crazy to think, but July, May, 10 years. Wow. Yeah, so that's kind of crazy. Um, but we've been doing this for 10 years. And the way that I got into this business, I joke that I must have been in denial because customers were coming to our candy store. That's how we started as a full-fledged brick and mortar in Middletown, Delaware. And they would say, do you love candy? And I would say No. <laughs> So the way that the business started was my husband um, was entrepreneurial before I met him, and so was I, and we would talk about the type of businesses we would start. And one time I did a Google search and said, what are some of the easiest businesses to start? Mm -hmm. And it said candy. And it kept coming up as like the top one. I'm like, I'm going to start a candy store. (laughs) My town needs a candy store. Um, We're both original New Yorkers, so we remember going to the corner stores in our neighborhoods. Yes, yes. And buying penny Penny candy. (laughs) So we're like, we need to bring this to our neighborhood. Obviously, it won't be a penny anymore, but Mm -hmm. we're going to bring this to Delaware. And we did, and it went well. But I think I was in denial. I would tell people, no, I didn't love candy. That It was this Google search. But I I obviously love candy. I have so many fond memories of going to the candy store with my grandmother every time I visited her house in Harlem to get candy from the candy store. I remember taking change out my dad's room so I could buy it when we were home in Queens. So... That was a part of like my upbringing, and I was not aware of how much a part candy was a part of my story and why maybe in the Google search it stood out to me so much to start a business in candy. So that was sort of how we got started. I would, you know, nag my husband, like, we just start a candy store, and he would just ignore me. He's like, I'm not leaving my job to start a candy store. Like, are you crazy? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we should do it. We should do it. And we did, and he jumped in with me and kind of so much has unfolded since then. That's wonderful. Thank you. I love that story. Thank you. And so, uh, why cotton candy? How did you how did you how get did into evolve? that? Yes. Great question. So, we started off like I mentioned as the, in the brick and mortar. We had hundreds of candies, water ice, ice cream. We were doing ice cream cakes. We did kids birthday parties, wow. you name it, all in this space. This is so interesting to me because I know nothing about you. I <gasps> met you just for context. Yes. I met you at the uh Pretty in Pink yes. event this in year, Delaware event. Female Creatives event. And I loved your energy, Aww. and I, I just, I, I was like, I have to know her. 
and yes. I have to sit down with you her. Sense. Yes. And I've gone on your website. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I learned a little bit more about you, but all of this is, it, I'm just intrigued. All right. Oh, yay. Go ahead. Yay, tell yay, me. Yay. Okay. So good. Good. Um, so we, we had this candy store and we're selling all this stuff and people would come in and it was doing good. And then we would get invited to community events all the time. So we, in the beginning, would try to transition our gummy candies to outdoor events, obviously with milk. It mm-hmm. would hold up in these glass jars. Glass jars would break as sure. we commuting and it just became a mess. So then my husband had this idea of let's try cotton candy and get a mobile water ice cart. And how about popcorn? So all of your carnival themed candy is yeah. what we would do for community events. Yes. And then the cotton candy out of those other three items, um, two items rather, stuck. It was a thing that we just kept going deeper and deeper. Like we started off just spinning sugars made by other companies to my husband exploring how could I make my own flavors to how do we package this cotton candy? And then like if, if I had pictures like the First packaging had someone else's label on it, mm-hmm. these plain containers that we were able to get our hands on to like evolving into like branding and labeling it ourselves and coming up with more flavor profiles. So we just kept diving deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And the more we would release flavor profiles, people would get really excited. So I definitely have to like give a lot of credit to my husband yeah. for this business because although I may have been the first with the initial idea, he really did like the grunt work of figuring mm-hmm. out how are we actually going to make this a thing. Um, and yeah, so he made all the flavors. I came up with some labels and cotton candy became our thing. And I think I love Shark Tank. Like I think most entrepreneurs do, right? Mm-hmm. Like we watch it and we try to get a little bit inspired. Um, and a lot of the businesses that were successful had a product that was their own. And although we had a candy store, like we could never go on Shark Tank unless we get a product that's our own. Mm-hmm. So I think cotton candy was something we could wrap our arms around and say, this is going to be our thing. We're going to make it from scratch and we're going to brand it moving forward. Wow. So you're, you were doing, I mean, you probably didn't realize you were doing it at the time, but you were doing like market research in real time. In real time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to see what was working, what wasn't, what flavors, let's try this. That's, that's amazing. Absolutely. And I think that that is one of the, it was hard, but it was definitely a benefit because like Mm -hmm. you learned immediately who our target market was. Mm -hmm. You go to business workshops and they'll say, you have to know who your target avatar customer is, what they look like, where they like to shop, what they like to eat, if they have kids, if they're married. And those are things we intuitively were learning because we were meeting our target customer on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. She was coming into our store. She was telling us about her family, where she worked, what she liked to do. She was coming to events that we branded in certain ways. So we knew who she was. Mm -hmm. We knew where she was shopping. When we did our pop-ups in Christiana Mall, guess what? She was in there. So we were able instantly not just to like figure out what flavors are good, what flavors aren't good, but who are we selling to? Mm-hmm. And how do we continue to speak to her in a way that our brand grows and doesn't just stay stagnant? So that was a extremely, um, I think, instrumental part of our business growth. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we started recording, we were just, you know, just casually sharing what we did uh, prior to starting our own businesses. And, you know, I've, I've talked before about being in education. I was a high school teacher. You were in uh, nonprofit. I was. So what we were talking about transferable skills, right? You think yes. when you leave that job, oh, this is the only thing that I, I can do. I can't do anything else. Can you speak to what are some, you think, transferable skills that you had from your previous career that have definitely been beneficial to you as you started this, this career, your own business? Thank you. I love that question. I think the one thing that I see being consistent in my life and in career is serving people. Mm. When you work for a nonprofit, it isn't about you. It's about the mission of the organization, but that mission is often to serve. Who's my client and how do I serve yeah. them best? And I think even with a candy store, even with cotton candy, Anthony and I have always been intentional about thinking, how do I serve my customer best? How do I show up for them and be consistent and give them a product that they know they can rely on in a timely manner if they're ordering it for a special occasion? How can I customize this for them? So I think that idea of service Mm -hmm. is very transferable. I think it's important in business. I think a lot of times it's missing. And when people get it, it's almost like a fresh, like, you know, a breath of fresh air. Like, oh, my gosh, like you guys are so um, attentive. You reply to me quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, it might not be the same day, but even if you reply like the right night, people are like shocked. Like, oh, my gosh, you got back to me. I wasn't expecting to hear from you for a week. So (laughs) which I don't know why. Like, uh, here I am. I'm ready to serve you. So that has been, um, I think, what's really made Candy Connect successful and what makes me ultimately feel good about being in business is that I'm still able to serve. Yeah. So you decide we're doing this cotton candy. You do the research. You start, you know, figuring out what flavors. 
how do you go? What happened to the brick and mortar store? And you, you talked about having pop ups in Christiana. How did you get there? How did that whole thing yes. happen? So, great question. You mentioned my son earlier, yes. who is peeking on the steps. So, I hope that he. <laughs> We'll find his way back to his room so we could do this amazing. He's fine. He's um, good. Podcast, but um, so we had Linux, uh, 2019. It was our fifth year in the candy store, and we had been doing the pop-ups in Christianity Mall for maybe one or two summers at that point. And we realized that the model was more profitable to be in the mall. Mm-hmm. And it also took less time. We were making more profit in three months than we could in a year's mm-hmm. time in the brick and mortar. We talked about not being able to mourn a season, right? So we were there for five years. That's Mm -hmm. where our business got started. That's where community got connected with us and we connected with them. So that was a really hard pause. Sure. Like, we're not going to have a brick and mortar anymore. We're not going to be the staple in our community that Mm -hmm. we love. We're going to walk away from this and try this new model Mm -hmm. that's showing better profit margins. And I think that that's a hard thing from a person that comes from a service background is that I don't always look at numbers, right? Yeah. It's not always like, it just the relationships. Good, mm-hmm. right? It just feels good to be yeah. here. And that was hard to say, even though it feels good, it's not serving us financially. We have this new baby. Yeah. We're going to need to pivot. Okay. And so you're, tell me about the pop-up in Christiana. Okay. So I had seen, what made us want to do a pop-up? So this is, oh, this is my funny good story. So we were doing vending events outside and that was difficult because you're outside and there's no heat. I mean, no AC. Yeah. Right. No running water. You're using porta potties all Mm -hmm. day long at these events. And sorry, let me sit downstairs playing with (laughs) this. It's okay. (laughs) You're outside and you're doing these vending events and you're like, this is not fun. Um, like I'm, we're making really good money, but I'm hot mm-hmm. and I really want to use a bathroom with actual running water. Yes. Like that would be great. So I start thinking like, where could we get this same foot traffic, but not necessarily be in the elements, right? I'm not really an outdoorsy person. I think in theory it sounds fun. And then I get there and I'm like, sure. let's pack up. <laughs> yeah. So and we would do it. We'd sweat in profusively all day mm-hmm. long, making great profits, but not necessarily in the best element. So I started looking for traffic. Malls bring good foot traffic. Mm-hmm. You were talking about the kiosk and yeah. why people didn't were saying, why don't you open a store? Another store, yes. right. So people would see us in the mall and they're like, oh, you should get a store. And I'm like, we don't want a store because the store means that I'm, I have to get you to come mm-hmm. in. If I have a kiosk and you're walking around me, you're my customer. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as I speak to you and I, I greet you, you could very well transition into a customer. So that was why we love the kiosk model. And I think it was, it, you know how like life can be like, have these moments, right? So I'm thinking this, and then like social media promotes me open a pop up in Christiana Mall, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm literally like having these thoughts, and now all of a sudden this like way to do it because I, I didn't know anyone what a business in a mall, so all of a sudden this way to do it becomes like accessible, mm-hmm. and we apply to do it, and we've been there ever since, and have built great relationships with the mall staff there, and it's it's just been great. And so, where is your kiosk located in the mall? Does it change or? It has changed okay. only because I, I do seasonal. So sometimes if I want a space that I had before, they'll say, um, you know, we have a full-time person there now. So okay. we're going to put you here. But I typically like to be, and I think for anyone listening, right, like knowing where to be in a mall is, again, knowing where your target market consumer is. Mm-hmm. For us, somehow we found out that being in front of sneaker stores, they bring a lot of people in okay. and it works. So there was a sneaker store where we were originally at. It closed, and now where we typically are is in front of the sneaker store in Christian Mall. Okay. The main one, that same drag, and we find that that gets a lot of foot traffic. Gotcha. So that's something we've assessed, and I remember meeting with someone who had years of experience in working in malls, and his advice was to sit in front of where you think you want to open your business in a mall for an hour and just count how many people walk by. Because that can give you an idea of, like, am I going to make money sitting here if I got... 10 of these 100 people that just walked by, how much money could I possibly make over those 10 people? Yeah. Um, and I thought that was great advice. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what we do when we scout malls in general is we sit and we try to figure out, like, are there really people walking here? Like, we heard it was popular, but what does that look like for us and the type of customer that we know would um, engage with our product? Gotcha. So, and I've had this conversation with other uh, women business owners that I've interviewed the idea of bringing on help, right? So th- this is very much, and I, I follow you on social media, obviously, and um, it, this is a family business. It's yes. very much a family business. And I know that your husband is instrumental yes. in, you know, just the, the con- conception and the success of it and keeping it going. 
letting someone else into that, right? So obviously you can't be in two places at once. You know, do you have people working at your kiosk? Because I, I feel like I've seen that on social media. You have people working for you. How do you get over, because that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. How do you get over that? Th- this is a family thing and, and we're kind of, um, this is insulated. No one yeah. else is really involved in this. How do you open that door or feel comfortable and confident bringing, like, what's that process like to bring somebody else in yeah. and, and hope that they do it the way that you want it to be done? That's an awesome question. I actually just answered it earlier today on another call. So I'm like, okay, this is my question for this season. So we have not opened yet in Christina Mall this season. Okay. Um, we're going to be opening this weekend. Um, we'll be open for four consecutive weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the reason being is because I find it extremely difficult to hire for my kiosk. The kiosk is forward facing business, mm-hmm. right? So it is the person that is engaging with those customers the way that I mentioned earlier that we prioritize at Canyon Connections. And that's what joy and consistency and being upbeat and really being able to speak about the product knowledgeably while also creating genuine organic connections yeah. that have nothing to do with the cotton candy. That is really hard to hire for. And I've been lucky in the past or once in a blue, you'll see someone that I made with a post that was incredible. Mm-hmm. But usually those incredible people go off to college. Sure. They go off to start their own business. Yeah. They get married. They, you know, they move on. Sure. So it's hard to retain them. What I'm learning now in business is to hire for roles that I'm willing to give up. Mm. So I've decided to open only for these four weekends this year in Christiana Mall, where before we would open for the entire May through August. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm only doing these four weekends, one, because it's just going to be me. And I realize my capacity to like really show up consistently and not be tired and burnt out and give our customers our best is going to require me to shorten it up a bit. Yeah. I can't be there every weekend for the whole summer. And then two, hiring for things that I feel comfortable letting go of. Mm-hmm. So my warehouse now where we fulfill our cotton candy is completely um, staff. That's not something I feel like. I need to have my hands on, but it frees me up to feel like I can have the energy to serve customers in person. So Mm -hmm. for example, in the past, we were making all the cotton candy all week long and then we were serving in customers all weekend long. So it was still a seven day a week business, even though you only saw us three days. Now I have staff that's making my cotton candies, making my sugars, packaging it, labeling it. I'm picking it up and I'm selling it. Yeah. And that is where I'm finding freedom and letting go of finding things that is okay to let go. Mm -hmm. If I can trust you to make the recipes correct and I can trust you to stuff these containers correct, then we're good to go. Yeah. And that's something I can teach. It's sometimes really hard in my experience to teach personality, to teach how to show up um, consistently for a customer and, um, you know, you shouldn't be on your phone all day long. Right. I can't be there to watch you, see if you're on your phone all day long. So those things aren't easy to teach. Sure. Um, And I'd much rather teach the other stuff and do what I have to do on the forefront. She's a busy woman. She's getting a phone call. It's well, probably spam. While well, we're speaking, I don't know. You seem pretty important. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I, it's just interesting story. I had my husband's um, 50th birthday a couple of uh, weekends ago. Okay. And um, one of the conundrums, and, and you find this with a lot of venues, they really pack the events in. They book mm-hmm. them back to back. Yes. So this Pre, this event prior to my husband's party wasn't over until 4 or 4.30. Whoa. His started at 6. No. I'm home trying to get myself together, trying to get the kids ready, make sure everybody's ready so that we can then get over there by 6. It was a dilemma. So I actually reached out to a friender. I love that term. Yes. Um, who I know has assistants. Yes. And she put me in contact with one of her assistants. Nice. And so, and she, oh, shout out to Chrissy. She was amazing. Um, She stepped in and I I hired her essentially to, to set everything up. I dropped everything off. So that was already there for her. And then she just executed the decor, how I wanted it. And my husband had said to me a day or two before, this is going to be a real um, lesson for you Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in relinquishing control and letting things go you might be pleasantly surprised to find that you're able to let things go and someone can actually do what you ask them to do yes. and it's going to turn it's out all right. Well. But yeah. you may always be the person that someone gets on the call, right? Because you're going to be that first touch. And, and maybe eventually you're willing with that too, but yeah. maybe you need to have that first touch with the customer so they know right. that you're overseeing it. 
but you can let someone else go and do the yes. work of actually setting up your vision with a plan. Yes. Right? And that's where I think I'm finding from hiring is easier, right? If I give someone a plan, a recipe, mm -hmm. they can usually follow that. But if I say, I want you to talk to every single customer that walks by. Different. It's different, mm -hmm. right? Like, because people are like, really? Every single person? I'm like, yep, every single person. You at least say hello. Mm -hmm. Because now they know you're here. What do you, how many times have you gone in the store and no one said hello? Yeah. So that stands out to a customer if I'm at my kiosk and I say hello to every single person that walks by. Yeah. They'll wrap back around. People walk the mall all day long. And the third time around, they might want to stop and actually start a conversation that mm -hmm. leads to a sale. But I think that's harder to teach. Mm -hmm. Then here's a plan. Mm -hmm. Here's a recipe. Got it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you definitely have the personality for being that front facing person. Yeah. And, and bringing somebody in, you know, you've got a way of you're just so bubbly. And so this is one of the reasons why I was so um, I felt so connected to you when awesome. we met that day. Yes. Because you have you just got a, a there's an energy about you and I can br I can do that. Yes. I have to, it, it, I got to bring it out. Yes. I feel like for you, it's, it's right there. You know I what I mean? Worried because my first call this morning, they would say 8.15 to jump on. And I told you I'm not a morning mm -hmm. person. And then I knew you were coming at 10. I'm like, dear God, I pray that I could bring the energy. It, <laughs> but you're right. It's just you do. like, I get excited. You do. And it just starts coming out. So, yes. And, and you're right. Some people have it. Like we all have our skill set. So finding out what skill sets you're willing to relinquish to someone else to take over yes. and which skill sets you're like, those are mine. I'm going to lock in with those. Yes. It's, I think that's how you grow your business and grow your staff. For sure. And it's funny, you're acting surprised when I'd say, oh, you, you know, you've got this energy. I, I have that happen sometimes where people will say to me, oh, you, you're so personable. You were so easy to talk yeah. to. And I'm like, I am? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. But you get that feedback more than once and you're like, all right, that must be true. It must be true. What I think I I'm presenting is different than yes. what I'm actually presenting. Yeah, I you know, feel good energy from you. I mean, I, my, I kept joking with my husband, like I've only met her once, but yeah. she came to our house today. Like it wasn't a thing for me. No. I felt very comfortable yes. having you come over. I'm glad. So yeah, I, yeah. I did feel that way. Too. I'm glad. Tell me about the warehouse okay. and you know the folks that you have. Oh, they're, making they're the, the product. They're Tell amazing, me a little bit about that. Amazing women. I don't know what I would do without them. So I have a group of women and they literally do everything. Our warehouse is in Wilmington, Delaware. Okay. We opened it. It's been over a year now. Wow. And we produce all of our cotton candy, all of our sugars in house. So everything is made from scratch by us. I mean, obviously we're not making the sugar, but sure. we flavor it. Yeah. We do all of that. Um, and then we package, we seal, we label everything in house. So oftentimes when I talk about us being a small business, that is something like I like to focus on because I think like people think these labels just come on the containers and they just seal like, oh, you it's a machine sealing them. Like, no, they're no. individual people yep. putting every single label on. So if it's a little crooked, you know, give us a little grace because <laughs> we did it like with our eyes. Yeah, it's our, made with love. It's this made is, with this is legitimate. It's authentic. Love. It's authentic. Yeah. And yeah, we hired this woman who's incredible and she's like bought on different family members. Oh, cool. And they're all incredible. And they wrap their arms around that part of our business as if it were their own. And I could not be more grateful for that because I think being in business for 10 years, those are the things you pray for, right? Mm -hmm. Someone to come in and take over a particular space, take it off your plate as if it were their own. Yeah. And she's always done that from like day one. And I literally feel like I can like leave her with the list and say, okay, I'll see you later, Mary. Yeah. She's like, call me if you need me. And she does it. And she just does it all. I mean, things I don't even ask for. She goes above and beyond. And I'm just so grateful for her and her family that has come in and is holding down our warehouse. Yeah, that, that's so great that you have people that you um, can trust and you, you know, just have an appreciation for you and your business. And like you said, they're treating it like your own. That's they be, definitely, we, that's great. They're like family now. Like I went to their daughter's graduation party. We bought water rice for them. Like it was like, we're coming. And she's like, I know you have boxes to pack. And I'm like, it's okay. Like I'm going to be there for your family. Yeah. Even if it's just for an hour, we're showing. I love that. They've just been so incredibly good to us. Um, and freed us up in ways that would not have been able to grow the business the way we did this year yeah. had they not been there. That's great. Mm -hmm. So the name Candy Connections, is that the name, like wh where does that name come from? Was that part of when you had the candy store? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we had that name since the candy store. Gotcha. And I think connecting was always the goal. Mm -hmm. Making connections was always the goal, right? When you enjoy a candy treat. I feel like you can connect generations, mm -hmm. right? Because grandma's introducing you to something that maybe she had as a kid. Yeah. Because we had nostalgia candies from way back when, um, up until like, you know, modern candies that kids would recognize, like gummy sharks. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a lot of connections that would happen in the family. 
um, parents coming in the same, sharing things with their kids. And their kids are like, what's that? That doesn't smell good. Why does it smell like violet? Like, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> so, and then um, the connections then that we made. Yeah. So it was really good to see that organically happen. Right? Yeah. Um, I remember one time the mayor of Wilmington at the time came in and he was an older gentleman and it was music playing. He just started dancing. And so when you see a mayor just dance, yeah. you see they're very like, you know, strict, serious. And he just let his hair down mm -hmm. at a moment. And that was what we sought to do, um, why we named it Candy Connections. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like that successfully happened throughout yeah. the years. And it sounds like you're carrying that vibe and that energy into this aspect of the business. You know, even though you've pivoted and you've shifted a little bit in, in you know, your business and what you're actually um, producing, that has stayed Thank constant. You. Thank you for pointing that out because I think that was my biggest concern. Like, how do you have an online business and make connections? Yeah. It's the internet. And I, maybe I was a little, like, dated in the sense when I was mm -hmm. thinking about this, but I didn't see how I was going to make connections with people if I wasn't meeting them in person. Right. If I wasn't serving them in person. And then we started shipping cotton candy out, and I said, let's put quotes on every single container. Something inspiring. Something that when people read it, it goes beyond sweet to satisfaction, which is something we talk about at Candy Connections. And they feel good yeah. about what they're seeing. That's cute. So that's something we did. And that, to me, made me feel like I was connecting with people, even though I wasn't in front of them. Right? Mm -hmm. I was able to inspire you. Hopefully, you read it and you felt good about mm -hmm. whatever you had to face that day. Yeah. Um, so that was one way. And then, obviously, social media allows you to make some connections and really become the face of a brand. But... In the beginning, I was like, how are we going to have an e-com business? Like, I want to talk to people. I want to see people. Yeah. <laughs> So I've seen on social media, um, you were doing, it was like an event uh, for Kendra Scott. Yeah. And I want to get into the QVC okay. piece of this. Okay. So wh tell me about the Kendra Scott okay. event. And then I, we have to, okay. I, I want to hear all about QVC. Thank you. Thank you. So your, your business obviously has to be on Google, which like, obviously it. But I don't really know how we got on Google. I'm thinking I must have set it up at some <laughs> must point. Must have. <laughs> I must have done it, but I don't know. So, anywho, the Kendra Scott thing literally was a Google thing. Okay. Um, they were opening a store at our local mall. Okay. And the event planner, she has a different title, but she reaches out to me and yeah. she's like, I um, found you on Google. And I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. Didn't know that I was searchable in that way. <laughs> but okay, great. She found me on Google. And I guess we came up as Cotton Candy in Delaware. Mm -hmm. And she invited us to be a part of their grand opening events. And that relationship has continued to blossom um, through other opportunities we've had with Kendra Scott afterwards. Yeah. That opportunity in Kendra Scott scored, a lot of people think that it happened because of my experience with NBC. Mm -hmm. but it actually happened before NBC. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tell me about NBC before we get to QVC. Okay, okay. Let's do that. I love both of the yeah. networks. Okay. <laughs> so um, the NBC story, I'm trying to think like the long, short end version of it because I really want whoever's listening to get something from this. Yeah. Um, I was pitching NBC for weeks leading up to National Cotton Candy Day, which is in December. Okay. And I would send them this press release that I generated all on my own. Nash I'm so, so National Cotton Candy Day. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. In December. And it's in December. Yes, it I is. just learned something today. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. So I'm pitching them every week leading up to it, like three times a week with a, a pitch that I put together all on my own. I had remember hearing from, I was a recipient of a grant program called Partner to Empower okay. with Brookfield Properties. And they had a woman come speak about marketing and pitching to the news. Mm -hmm. She said, send it early in the morning because mm -hmm. that's when producers are reading their emails. Mm -hmm. So I was doing it, checking it off my list like three times mm -hmm. week, early in the morning. No response. So I'm a faithful Today Show, Hodo and Jenna, um, NBC Philadelphia mm -hmm. watcher, right? They come on back to back, right? And I started that when I was pregnant with Linux up until now. And I'm writing in, I'm writing in, nothing, nothing. So I'm getting discouraged. I'm like, I'm never watching NBC again. <laughs> <laughs> no one's writing me that. Like, don't they know I love them? And nothing happens. And I kind of got a little discouraged, right? Yeah. Because like, you're like, I'm putting one foot in front of the other. I'm doing the work. Sure. And nothing's happening. Yeah. So I decide to still watch the network even after they didn't write me back. And at the end of a whole engine segment, they say, if your family is looking to pivot in the new year, we want to hear from you. Okay. So I learned to stop procrastinating from my amazing husband, who was getting on my nerves about procrastinating. So I stopped procrastinating, right? And I wrote it immediately. Okay. Because Anthony and I had been having the conversation. We're coming into year 10 of our business. Yeah. We've done a lot of different things, a lot of different versions of this business. Mm -hmm. What do we want to focus on moving forward? So pivoting, that word was like, that's us. That's what we're talking about in our house. So I wrote in right away. I heard that week. So 
why I love this particular story and our journey is not just because of like the end glory of it, but like the beginning part of it was me writing in for something, asking for one five minute segment mm -hmm. on one day, to then writing me back for something they needed and saying, we want to do a four part segment with you. Wow. We want to drive you to New York four weekends in a row. And on top of that, we're going to come to your house twice to record other stuff. That, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it was like a thing for like four to six years yeah. of my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. With NBC. <laughs> yes. And it was like, this is bigger than what I could have asked mm -hmm. or expected. Right. Yeah. Like, I was only asking for one little five minute segment on National Cotton Candy Day, which I would still do. So like National Cotton Candy Day, if someone wants to do a segment with me, I'm ready. Yeah. But I got way more than that. Um, I got way more than I bargained from. And then they ended up getting the Kendra Scott, not the store, to be our business coach, which like I kind of freaked out when that happened because I had that moment where I was in their store for their grand opening. Yeah. I was making all these great connections and it felt big then. It felt big just to be in the Kendra Scott store with my sure. TikTok having an event. Yeah. But now it's like, the Kendra Scott is going to come sit next to me on this couch. And oh, she's going to get on Zoom with me a couple of times a week to like coach me through my business and teach me about big, hairy, audacious goals and help me to start dreaming about this business again. That sometimes, depending on where you are in your journey, it can get stale. It can, yeah. So that was like, just what I needed, just what we needed um, to start our year off this year. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity. That is, I mean, that's just like, what a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. 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 And I, I, your kids were part of that um, yeah. interview I've said. seen. Yeah. yeah that's so family. cool. That Thank is you. so cool. Thank you. I hope that they get to look back on it and feel like it was super cool. And oh, I, they will. I love it for them because they're with me in the grind. Yes. So for them to have this like moment where cars are picking them mm -hmm. up and they're going and doing cool stuff in New York, Linux was like, he thought that was life. It was so funny. Like, let's say sometime in that time frame, we were going to the zoo and he goes, is the car coming to pick us up? <laughs> and we're like, no, sorry, son. Yeah. Not, not the car today. But like, yeah, it, it was nice to see them enjoy that because yeah. they're with me on days that aren't as fun. Sure. Where I'm lugging stuff around. Exactly. And running to UPS stores and like, come on, guys. Yep. So that was really cool. Yeah, they will. They will definitely appreciate that. I, I, what a cool experience for them. But just also to see you as their mom and, and mom and dad. Let's get dad in there, right? Their yeah. parents. Yeah doing this and being successful and just having, having their moment yes. and shining. I, yes. I, I think they will, they, that's, that, I think those are you, memories, I think man. You on a good point because I said to someone like leaving a legacy for your kids when we start businesses, isn't necessarily always leaving a business and it could right. be, but it is them seeing you go after something that yeah. you believe in full heartedly mm -hmm. that will hopefully give them the courage and legacy to know that they can go after whatever they're dreaming of with that same passion and zeal. Yeah. So I feel like, Sometimes, like, obviously, I would love to leave them a million-dollar business or whatever, maybe billion. Like, that's big, hairy, audacious. Hey. That's, what, that's what Kendra would talk yeah. about. Yeah. But even if I leave them with, like, mom went for it. Yeah. Like, dad went for it. Yeah. Like, they tried. Like, they gave it everything they had. Um, that's important. It's very important. My daughter said something. This was a few weeks ago. She said something to the effect of, well, you're famous. I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, when I Google you. Hmm your business comes up. Ooh. So, I mean, you're pretty famous. Yes. I was tickled by that. Uh -huh. Cause I'm thinking, I, no, right. not at all. Not me. But in her little world, it just, I think it, it just reminded me that she is seeing me having this business. I, she doesn't understand scale or scope or anything like that, but she sees me doing it, yes. having events, yes. having customers, making connections with people. Yes. I've got this podcast. Yes. She can Google me and, and my up. website comes yes. up to Mom's her. Yeah. I thought that was really cute. I love that. Yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. yeah I love that for us. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, tell me about QVC. Okay. So QVC is a dream. Yeah. So this is huge. Here's things like I, I was joking with you before we come on camera, all the things in my life I've been in denial about. I feel like eventually it can be a short story. So people would say, do you love candy? No, I don't love candy. Right. I'm denial. I do. I love sweet treats. Sure. I just do. I like cake. I like it all. Um, and then with TV, I think when I did NBC, I was like, oh boy, I really like this. Like, I like it too much. So when I met you, you said how, you had a podcast. I'm like, can I be on it? Yeah. Because I love <laughs> these sort of things. Yes. So QVC had reached out to me a year before NBC even happened. Wow. And I'll tell you a bit how it happened, but the brand rep pretty much told me this could be a year long process. Like, okay. I'm talking to you today, but you likely won't be on for another year. Wow. And I'm like, but she kept like trying to get me on before the Sure. Year. But it literally took Yeah, I mean, who knew? I don't know. Who knew that it would take that long? It's a whole thing. Everything's a process, it's I a, guess. Everything. 
thing. Yeah. And so I think, like, that's the thing about, like, life. And once you get to a certain level, like, people will look at your business and what you're doing in your podcast and be like, that was super easy. Like, she just put a podcast together. But I saw you come in my house, take your time, set up. Like, it's a thing. But yeah. no one sees that part. Right. So the same was true with QVC as it is with anything. Like, right now we're trying to get on Amazon and other platforms. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, what do y'all want? Like, my firstborn, this is a lot. Yes. Like, just let me put the cotton candy on the screen. But it isn't that easy. Mm-hmm. So back to QVC. They reach out to me because um, my husband, always been a supporter, always been a cheerleader for, like, all my crazy ideas. Very lucky in that, in that respect. So I said to him, Shark Tank is having auditions again in person because... Well, there is a four-year-old here. I'm not sure if we can pick that up. <laughs> but Shark Tank is having auditions again on um, in person because they had stopped because of the pandemic. But it's in California. He's like, okay, you want to go? I'm like, I do. He was like, okay, book it. So like, okay, book it. It was like less than two weeks away, maybe 10 days or something like that. And we have kids and it's school time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, Mom, can you keep our kids? Because we're going to go right. to California <laughs> and audition for Shark Tank. Yeah. Um, and I will say, like, I don't think I have, like, um, I will talk myself out of things. So had it not been for Anthony, I would have talked myself out of going to California. So we, we go, um, and we audition, and I realize that there are cameras there. This mm-hmm. is before NBC, but there are cameras. ABC News is here, mm-hmm. and I realize that this is an opportunity, even if I don't get on Shark Tank, yeah. to position myself in front of every single camera. What a great attitude. Yeah, like you, you, like I'm here. Like we flew all the way to California. Yeah. I'm like, we're staying in this hotel. Like we might as well seize the moment. Sure. Right? What's the worst that can happen? They, they, they don't put me on screen. Yeah. So every time I saw a camera, I had product in hand. I had a Candy Connections t-shirt on and I just would like position myself to mm-hmm. be in camera, be in notice of camera to get the interviews with the host of whoever was there. Not knowing that they would then take my picture and use it as a cover image for the story. Wow. Right. So I, I actually never, like, I don't think I ever saw the story, but QVC rep saw me. Yeah. Other people, like, were calling me, not even, like, Shark Tank that I went to California. Mm-hmm. But other people started calling because they, like, we saw you as a screensaver for this image with ABC News auditioning for Shark Tank. And we're interested. How about that? About your company. So that's how, and, and, you know, you get these emails. I've had emails like that come from Target before, too, like from buyers. And I'm like, is this really Target? Is this really QVC? Right. But I answer because I'm like, maybe it could be. And if it's not, then I'll hang up. So it was. It was really them. It was real brand reps. And they were really interested. And um, it took a year for us to actually launch. So when we were on NBC, we actually had our date for QBC. So it was like this really cool experience. Like, I'm going to be on NBC these dates. And then I'm going to launch on QBC these dates. But in the background, I have this amazing Miriam who's going to make sure I have cotton candy for all of this stuff. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. So you go on QVC. Yeah. Um, you met Martha Stewart. I did. I saw that. Oh, yeah. I was such a nerd. Oh, my God. Like, but who isn't a nerd? First of all, I thought she was a statue. Like, I'm just such a weirdo in that way. Like, she's. And then she was standing very like Martha Stewart in mm-hmm. the hallway. And like, I'm in a hallway and at the check-in desk. Who thinks Martha Stewart's going to be standing <laughs> Right. There? Like, it almost feels like she's not real. Like, you guys have a paper cutout of her. And she's not really moving or talking because she's Martha. Yeah. Her people are doing the movie. Sure. And once I realized it was her, I couldn't get my life together. And, like, I totally geeked out. And I have no shame in asking for pictures at this point. Yeah. I will add. And, like, you know, you kind of, they kind of look. So she did this thing where she goes, it wasn't rude at all. But I tell people it was very Martha. She goes, quickly. And I said, I don't know if I did it, if I really honed <laughs> it in. But it was like, whatever you say, Martha. Yes. And I got in there with her. We got our picture. And. It was like, that was a great way to start that yeah. moment off in my life. Um, I hope to run into her again in the hall there. Yeah. Do lunch? I don't know. Martha Holler. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with the uh, deal with QVC, you are selling, I guess they're selling your cotton candy. Yes. Do you ship it to them? Like, what, what is that process? Great question. So it, um, we ship direct to consumer. I, okay. think most of, I think most of their food-based companies do. I don't think, like, a lot of other, like, if you're in beauty, I know for sure you would ship your product to their warehouse and they ship out to consumer. Okay. But in food, I ship directly to consumer. So they have all these systems that had to be set up, which is a part of, like, you want to say, like, it is a part of why it takes so long mm-hmm. to get into the system, but it's also one of those things where it's, like, the hurry up and wait game. Mm-hmm. So I've been in the hurry up and wait game a couple times in my life, and it's, like, there's silence, and then it's, like, two months to go time, and then mm-hmm. like, you fill out 35 pieces of paper. Yeah. It's, 
send us 25 signatures, a sample of your blood type, and then do this. So yes. So they had um, a system. It's called, um, I can't think of the name of the system, but it's like a onboarding. Okay. All of the shipping labels come through. Gotcha. From QVC. I print them out on my end and I ship out from my warehouse. So that is something that I am still very intricately involved in. Um, even though like my warehouse, they make everything. Mm -hmm. I pack almost every box. So after launch day, we bring in other people to help us because it's thousands usually that have to go out. Mm -hmm. But post launch date, when it's like just a couple of hundred, it's me and my daughter packing all the boxes. So yeah. we still pack all our boxes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting. I was curious about that process. It's funny. I had a, a corporate client, pretty big corporate client, reach out. They wanted me to do some decor for an event they were having. And you're like, oh, me? Like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. And you, you start to, um, you just second guess. You know, um, at least I did. I yes. had that moment. It's but not imposter syndrome. Like, you know you could do it, but it's like you have this, like, dialogue. Like, I don't, I feel like I know I could do this, but it's yeah. like, you second guess it. I don't know. Why do they want me? Guessing. Right. Right. Why? I don't know. Like, did they call the right person? Yeah. Right. 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 So, but part of this whole process, and it took months, it was a lot of, you use the word onboarding. Yes. I had to go through their legal team. They had to look through my contract. To make sure that what I was having them sign, you know, I mean, all the legalese. Yes. Um, yes. Then I also had to provide all these, you know, documents. And it took a long time to get into their system. To even be a vendor. To, to be a vendor to do this business. Yes. Um, they just hired me for an event next year. Love that. But I'm, now I'm onboarded. So yes. I don't, I don't, don't have, have to do, do all that. that. Yes, yeah. Thank God. So, so now I see the benefit of doing it. Doing all that. Yes. Yeah. But like. I think that that's where, where I'm at now. It's like, I've done all of it for QVC, and now I'm looking at, like, three other platforms I'm trying to get on simultaneously. But yep. it's like, Danae, I just take one at a time. Yep. Because you're right. Once you're onboarded, you're in. Yeah. Like, it takes time. It does. To get in. So it's like, don't try to do a bunch at once. And, yeah. But you're right. Now that we're onboarded, we do a launch on QVC, everything just goes. That's it. I, it just goes. Yeah. And, like, and I mean, Q, it, it's QVC. It's QVC. So they, they have to make sure that they... Do yes. their due, due diligence, diligence. Yes. and and just making sure everything is streamlined. And so you learn so much. I think as small business owners going through their processes about like, like let's say they ask for a paper that you don't have. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, we got to go make that. Right. But you need that. Right. <laughs> Where is that? Yeah. Is I that? think I have that. I think I may have done that. That's in right. 20, 20, 20, yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So as far as events go. Yeah. So can people just reach out to you and hire you to come do their corporate parties, weddings? Like what, what are in that space? What are you doing there? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So we, I, I love that you're here. Like I could, I could oh, have a conversation. Thank you. I'm so happy. <laughs> Um, but we do have a mobile tuk tuk that you probably saw mm -hmm. in the Andrew Scott store. Um, we have a couple of Im images of it on social, maybe even our website now. And then we do we have a mobile water ice cart, mm. and those are what I'll be using those weekends that I mentioned that I'll be in Christiana Mall. Yes. Um, but from an event space, what we're noticing is that it's a real undertaking, which I'm sure you know. Loading up. Yes. Unloading. Yes. Like, and then like <laughs> doing it. Yes. And I think. Like I mentioned earlier, we've been in business for 10 years and it's really being thoughtful about how do we want to spend our time. So we, I love this Tuk Tuk and I do want to do more events with it. But the reality is I'm starting to really look at my Tuk Tuk as of today. Who knows where I'll be when the podcast launched. But right now it's like almost become like the mascot of my business. Okay. It comes out for very special events. Is it available for bookings? Yes. Sure. You can reach out to me. But for the most part, I'm really just looking to use it as a promo tool mm -hmm. because it, stand, it makes our cotton candy stand out. Mm -hmm. Like, wait, what is this truck? It has cotton candy on it. Like, yes. Like, that's yeah. all. It, it, it became this really cute promo piece, almost because we realized that we're getting a little tired. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it. Like, when we looked at pivoting and we looked at what parts of our business are really going well for us, what can we do kind of in our sleep without having to not necessarily do the grunt physical yes. work? Um, like even strapping the tuk tuk into the trailer, mm -hmm. like we've crashed in the trailer because we didn't trap strap it the right mm -hmm. way. Like we've done mm -hmm. all of these things. Um, and I mentioned we started off with vending events. So I think as of right now, if you ask me today, it's something that we're probably pivoting away from, mm -hmm. but I love the event space. So we have cotton candy push pops, which we've customized and have sent to several Kendra Scott stores across the country. Okay. We've done them for weddings and birthdays. Mm -hmm. After they were featured on the Today Show, I got more orders for those cotton candy push pops than I've ever seen. That's fantastic. In my entire, like, 10 years of business. Yeah. Um, and people were ordering large, large amounts of them. So we do have the capacity to mm -hmm. do that. And that is something that is naturally within what we're currently doing at our warehouse. So yeah. that's from an event space, I think, what we're really focusing on is 
How can we encourage more people to get our cotton candy push pops, which I have a couple? They're so cute. Thank you. And we can make them in just about any flavor, any coloring. Okay. And then we could customize the label anyway. Like we did one, um, when we were on the Today Show, we did one for Holder's birthday. She'll be 60 this year. We did one with a book cover for Jenna. You know, she writes a lot of children's mm -hmm. books. And then we did some with Kendra Scott's logo. So after that, several Kendra Scott stores across the country have ordered. Um, and that's our place. So that's where I see myself going in the future. Um, will I maybe get back into physical events? If I can staff it. Yeah. If that's an area of our business, I can imagine ourselves staffing out fully where we're maybe booking it on the back end. Mm -hmm. I'm making that connection with the customer, but someone else is physically taking the products out and can safely maneuver them without breaking them because it's a pretty hefty investment. That yes. Stuck. <laughs> it's not in made in America either. So if it breaks, I'm kind of in a, in a, yeah. In a drought. Yeah. So, but those are things that I think my husband being so supportive of me. He let me buy all these things, mm -hmm. but not really having a plan on that. Who's actually going to take it out, Denea? Yeah. I can't drive it. It's like a little moped on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's just a whole thing. So I'm glad we have it. It looks great when we bring it to yeah. KC. It looks great when we bring it in the mall. It really positions our company for what we're trying to do with Cotton sure. Candy. Elevate it, make it more of an elegant experience. Um, so we're focusing on pops for events for now. You know, I, what I'm hearing is just, you know, we keep using that word pivoting, pivoting. Um, it's just growing, right? And evolving, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and I found that with my business, I started out where I'm going to offer themed decor packages, right? So we're doing the 1920s or Parisian or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just found, and th that was it. Like yeah. that, that's the model. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then I just found that people were not it, they wanted to customize things. Yes. They wanted a bit of modern. I, th I thought I'm just going to be doing vintage because that that's my vibe and, and I'm doing that. Yes. And I had to pivot to use that term yeah. to meet the demands of the, the clients, yes. you know, and, and it was also learning too. Yes. This is what I think it's going to look like. This is really what it looks what like. It looks like yeah. People don't want this package I put together necessarily. Yes. They want to create their own. Yes. They want to mix and match. Yes. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong. You know, I just don't think there's anything wrong with starting in one place and then deciding I'm going to let this go or I'm going to change this yes. because you're just as a business just like you are as a professional and as, as a person, you're growing yes. and you're changing and you're evolving. Yes. And, you know, especially, you know, I mean, you've got kids and. And that's, that's the, I think that was the big thing. Yeah. Like we had to figure out what serves our family. Like yes. How does like, we want this business to continue thriving and we want to keep going, but what type of model serves our family? That's right. And the structure we need that's for our right. family. And our kids are like 10 years apart, but they need very different things. Absolutely. At the same exact time. Yeah. And that's important to us. So prioritizing that over, we're going to be doing events all week sure. long, but I can ship you as many pops as you That's want right. whatever event you got going on. Mm -hmm. And that's something I can do while they're in school. Mm -hmm. I can pack that up, have it off to you, and we can still have the weekends to do whatever activities they want to run me around with. Yeah. They and won't have me for the next four <laughs> weekends, though. They won't have me. And it's because you're so successful. Um, and you're, you, you've grown this business that you're able to make some of those, which sometimes can be hard choices, but you're able to, you have choice. It's all hard. I yeah. think because you love it all. I think as an entrepreneur, and I, I'm sure you can attest to this, your work becomes your art. So when yeah. you're naming those themes, I saw you lighting up. Mm -hmm. That's your art. That's like you created this scheme because you love yeah. the way that look. Um, so if you're letting go of it or you're like pivoting from yeah. it, it's hard. It is. You're, it's your art. Mm -hmm. And you're like, but I thought everyone loved it just Right, the way it exactly. Was. That's key, right? That I like this. I thought that that's what everybody yes, would like. Everyone would love yeah, it. Yeah, why and, don't and they? They're gonna book it all the time. That's right. Because it's beautiful, because it's your art. Yeah. And I think it's not easy. I think if you're if you're an entrepreneur and you're not leading with that kind of passion, I'm not really sure how you do it. Because sure. it's such a hard job mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur that if you don't have that passion, I don't know. I just don't know. Like, how are you doing this exactly? How do you wake up and actually do this? Again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't feel connected. So I've got a question for you. Okay. And I, I know you're going to answer this question impeccably. I know. Oh gosh. oh, gosh. What makes your cotton candy different than some other cotton candies so out there? So I love there? that question. And, and it's super simple. It's what we've always said, even at our kiosk. We make our product fresh. So I literally, my daughter, when we are packing boxes, if the container looks shrunk, we're not mailing it to mm. you. 
We want your container to look full and fluffy. We are packing that container to capacity. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when I go into stores, I feel like I'm the cotton candy police. If I see stuff on shelves, yeah. like not looking like it's filled to the top or you can tell that they really just put a light amount in it, almost like when you get a bag of potato chips and you open it mm -hmm. at the bottom. I don't want that to happen for you when you get our cotton candy. And then I think with our cotton candy push pops, what's really cool about it is that personalization mm -hmm. part that you and I both identify. Customers appreciate. Yes. They want to be able to say happy birthday, dad, or, you know, congratulations mm -hmm. on your graduation. They want to be able to do that. Or it's, you know, gender reveal parties. Yeah. And that is ways that we're connecting with our cotton candy with customers that I don't see other um, companies do. Mm -hmm. There's so many things happening with cotton candy now. Like if you put cotton candy on social media, you'll see tons of different things come up. But I feel like we really honed in on what works for us. Yeah. We, we're making it fresh. We're keeping you inspired. And we're letting you customize it as much as we can along the journey. And that is where we, we get set apart. See, you, you answered that beautifully. You, you I did. Tried. I was like, I don't know. You know once you said that, I was like, pressure. pressure <laughs> no, you did great. Thank you. Uh, what is the most popular two flavors? Oh, that's easy. So, you know what? It's a little bit of a competition, but top for sure is cookies and cream. Okay. It's a cotton candy we make with actual cookie crumbs all throughout it. What? I know. It's kind of crazy. Okay. It's kind of crazy. And it like, sounds delicious. It's delicious. People love it. Whenever yeah. we have it on the shelf, it does not stay. And then there's like this fight for second place between blue raspberry because it's traditional. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows it. You see it. You want it. Mm -hmm. And our strawberry cheesecake. So strawberry cheesecake has the same blend as cookies and cream, but with a vanilla wafer cookie instead. Yeah. That is my jam. I used to call it my mom dessert because it's pre-Linux. We had this flavor. Okay. Jada would go to bed and I would put it on top of vanilla ice cream. Nice. Like and I would call it my mom dessert because I had to have it to eat in peace. Okay. When she was asleep. You know that. You know those moments. Like yes. If you don't eat it without them. You don't really enjoy it mm -hmm. because they want to eat it with you. Exactly. So I would wait, like just go to bed and I'm going to eat this. Let me have my moment. I'm going to have this moment. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's a, it's a fight between them for second place for sure. When we were at the um, Delaware Female Creatives event, the Pretty in Pink. Yes. I had, it was, it's like a mini champagne wall that we have and it's love pink. It. So, it. you know, Heather was like, oh, that would be great. And so they had champagne and your cotton candy yes. was a, kind of like a, a garnish, you yes. know, an accoutrement to yes. the champagne Ooh, yes. that was on the champagne wall. So I did have a chance to actually sample. Yes. And it was, it was delicious. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. And I had never actually um, seen we it paired with champagne. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I would love to do yes. that. It was yes. such a cool pairing. Yes. It, it was, it was amazing. Yes. It looked pretty uh -huh. and it tasted great. Okay. Yeah. Thank it you. really Thank did. You. Thank I you. thought, wow, what a presentation. This uh, cotton candy on these champagne glasses. It's it was great. Cool yeah. Yes. So I want to talk to you about the grant that you won, yes. the DD uh, project wine yes. entrepreneurial grant. Yes. So tell me about that. Okay. Well, that. That's just like, what an amazing opportunity. It was such a cool opportunity. Um, so, so DD Project Wines ties in so lovely with the QVC story because obviously when you are a small business like me, you're moving maybe 100 containers weekly. Yeah. When you're working with a, a client or a vendor rather like QVC or right now we're talking to Costco and different places, thousands. So you're talking about taking my small business from a couple hundred to thousands yeah. overnight. Yeah. And I knew that that financially would be a big undertaking. And how do we get there? How do we make that leap? Um, so I think I saw it on the group that we're a part of, the Delaware Female Creatives, mm -hmm. um, post it as a grant. And I thought, what the heck, 15K, that could really get me where I need to be, to sure. get the inventory I need to really prep for this QVC thing, which at the time was still like not set in stone. But you know when you're going after something, like, it's going to happen. Like, if I have to show up to QVC on their doorstep with cotton candy mm -hmm. and ready to go, like, it's we're doing this. Mm -hmm. So I applied, and um, I submitted my video, and I told them about my conversations with QVC. I told them about auditioning for Shark Tank. I connected my story with the story of their um, late loved one, yeah. the greatness after, um, and I waited. And, I mean, I waited. I waited so much that it's funny. People are now DMing me, like, when do you hear back about the grant? <laughs> and I did the same thing. So I DM'd the winner prior to me. I was mm -hmm. like, when did you hear back about the grant? And she's like, oh, not until the fall. So we finally hear back and you go to this lovely event. Everyone greets you with like love when you walk in the room. So you're already like, even if I didn't win, this feels like a win. Yeah. Everyone's so nice. Yeah. Um, you meet the other finalists and you still don't know that you won. Mm -hmm. And they announced the winner on stage. So that was probably one of the biggest moments I think in my adult life because like, Anytime you get one of those big checks that you've ever seen like, sure. with the home shop, yeah. you know, like, oh, my God, that's like, even if it said, like, five bucks, like, I got a big check. Like, yeah. So that was really a cool moment. I loved it. Um, 
I, I can't say enough good things, not just about the grant and how it catapulted that. Moment oh, the people us. involved. The people I involved. can I can tell in in your post and I had a chance to meet them. So I, I know what you're going to say. They're yeah, incredible. Really it's genuine. Like and I, I think you. I'm not originally from Delaware, but I love Delaware. It's home. It's mm-hmm. where Linus was born. It's where I'm raising my kids. So this is home for me. And I feel like I've met a lot of people that feel the way that you say yeah. we feel and that they felt. And But when you're applying for a grant, you don't necessarily expect that. Maybe I, I think I probably went into it thinking I'm just going to be these very professional people. They're mm-hmm. going to shake my hand. Like they were like hugging me when I was So personable. Like, oh, okay. We're hugging. Yes. Let's do this. Um, and then we had a great dinner afterwards. So that grant literally is how we got on, like, QVC was coming, but QVC was able to happen because they funded us yes. in the right timing for us to be able to put the dollars towards the inventory that we need yeah. to take it to the next level. So that's why like, I, I cannot thank them enough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, congratulations thank on you. that because, you know, just taking the step to apply. I, I applied. Yes, good. Well, I never heard of it. Yes. And then when I was at the event, mm-hmm. I was, you know, going around and looking at the different vendors and buying things. And I was sampling the wine. I love wine. Yes. Big wine drinker. Yes. And I had never heard of this wine before. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if it was Carla or Mark, but I was talking to one of them. And, um, yeah, they were just explaining to me the, just the whole story with Capriati's. And I was like, wow, like I had no How idea. About this, right? I, yeah. And I love yeah. Capriati's. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've eaten yeah. it for years. Yeah. I had no idea. Yes. So that part of it was uh, you know, inspiring, you know, um, and what they're doing to keep her legacy going. Uh, that was just amazing. And this is after you and I had talked and then all of a sudden they made the announcement yes. and they brought you up and you just kind of shared your experience. And I was like, I was just talking to her. That's so crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, I did apply and Good. I just, it's, I would love to be able to be in a position at some point to do that, to do that for Same. somebody. Right. Same. Wouldn't that be That's great? The goal. Yeah. That's the goal. Right. I think we both share that sort yes. of background and wanting to serve and help others. And I would love to be able to do the same. I think sometimes about maybe doing it for students pursuing entrepreneurship in college. Because yeah. It could be scary. Like your family could be like, why are you doing right. that? Like, there's so many other degrees that can guarantee you employment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because I would love to be able to yeah. be able to give back in the same way that they've given to me. Yeah. Um, I think that a hundred percent is the goal. So yes, I can't thank them and say enough good things about them. Obviously the wine is delicious. It is. It is good. Here we are. We are. We're enjoying Rosé. Yes. Yes. I just tried, uh, they have a white and they have a red. And uh, a few months ago, I did try that. Yes. But it was the rosé that I sampled at the event. Yes. And I was like, oh, this this is we're, so good. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're hooked now. <laughs> now. Now we're best friends regardless. Yeah. So good luck with the grant. I know. Thanks. Um, I think this is your third season or year doing it so i think that that's part of it too right which is why i'm always like promoting it on my social media sure just be like oh look i want 15k but look you need to be yeah. for this because i know so many small female entrepreneur businesses like me follow mm-hmm. me and i think we don't know until someone tells us yeah. that hey this is out mm-hmm. here and it's three years in the making so it's still new they're still going yeah. they're still committed to this so if not this year next year like right put your name in the hat to at least be eligible and i think that's what I've learned from applying for grants is like a lot. I, I joke, it's a, a movie. I can't think of it, but they go, no, 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 no. And then finally you get a yes. <laughs> and that was my life of grants. I got like mm-hmm. no's after no's, like polite no's, like sorry, but. Right. And then finally I got a yes and it was like, yes. Yes. Just, just when I needed the yes. Yeah. Right? Like I really needed it then. So that was perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's next? Oh, that's such a good question. What's coming that you can share or that you feel comfortable sharing? Oh my God. So I'm glad you said that because like, oh I did want to talk to you about this. So obviously I'm super impressed by your podcast setup. I'm confident that mine won't be anywhere near as impressive <laughs> as this. No. no, no it, trust me. It will be very um, done in your garage kind of. Like, okay. Like in like NBC. Oh, wow. Yeah, you showed up like Thank NBC. You. <laughs> I'm going to show up like, you know, the network you don't know about, but like, but that's still on TV. It's going to be great. Right. But I definitely want to do this. I, I love sharing. I mm-hmm. love learning about other people. Um, and I want to talk to people. Uh, it'll be similar. So we're talking over wine. Yes. I'm going to chat over dessert. I love that. Because dessert is my thing. That's right. And yeah, so my husband's been encouraging me to start a podcast mm-hmm. forever. And I think I talked myself out of it. Because the conversation I was having was, everyone's doing it. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. It's going to be different. Like, 
And then I'm like, it's just your perspective. It's just your conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's what makes it unique. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, that's what makes it different. That's what makes it different. Mm -hmm. And I kind of had to get out of that. And then I also, we talked about this when you came before camera, like learning new things. Yeah. I remember thinking, I'm not going to be able to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. And then I found like an easy app. I'm like, I can start here. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try that. I have an event that I'm working on with the Natural Nest Play Cafe. We probably should connect offline. Okay. Um, it's going to be the launch of this in some aspects. So it's the name of the podcast is going to be um, Dessert First because I believe in that. I love that. I believe if you wait too long to eat your dessert, you usually don't have room. So just eat it first. Well, you know what I have a tendency to do when I'm in restaurants? No. I will look at the dessert menu okay. or ask the server, yes. what is on the dessert menu yes. before I order my entree? Yes. Because I need to know that first. It's important. In order to save room, I will, I will have it at the end, yes. but I need to know what dessert is first. So you, can, you need to know. <laughs> I need to plan. So that you can commit. That's to right. Like, I'm committing to the strawberry Dessert first. After this. I love that. So that's where we're leaning into and what we're going to be launching with the Natural Nest Play Cafe this fall is a three-part series where I'm inviting people that I'm calling my business besties, so I can't wait to have you on one of them. Oh. And we're going to just talk about our experiences yeah. in motherhood, entrepreneurship, yeah. and just doing all of this, right? Um, so it'll be our live airing at Natural Nest Play Cafe. Those dates will be on our website, but I'm super excited and nervous because again, I've been talking myself out of it for at least a year. Mm -hmm. Um, when we were on NBC, that was one of the goals they listed as my business goals to start a podcast. And that was back in January, y'all. So, I mean, it's still a J month though. It's July. It is. So I'm going to start recording like next week. Okay. Before July is over. Okay. And hopefully have some stuff that I can post in August. And I definitely need your feedback because, like, you're the pro at this. I, I'm not the I'm not the pro at this. Well, you're, you're but I'm I'm learning. I'm learning, so I can definitely share with you what I've learned. Okay, I'll take and it. And what's working for me, and I'll I I can't it. wait. I, can, right. I can't wait for and this. We'll have you back on. We'll that would be so this cool. There and like, did y'all see us? Like, we this is my this is my first time doing a podcast with you. This is my first time sharing. That I'm doing one. Yeah. I'm actually starting to sweat now that we're talking about it. I think it's going to be great. And I think that you are a really good person to actually host a podcast like this because really? yes, okay. of course. Okay. I mean, just, just your journey, how you've gotten here, the growth, um, just the, the connections that you've made, um, in the corporate world. I think, I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I That's okay. The day, we're just gonna it be comes talking. in, it comes hand in hand. Yeah. And I'll spell a little and wear things at high. That's all right. Like, you know, I think it's going to be great. I'm excited. You'll do the first and then the second one will be easier and then you'll just go from there. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, it'll be great. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to share it with you. I'm yeah. Really nervous, but I'm like, I'm gonna That's exciting. Us. Thank you. That's Thank very you. exciting. Tell me before we go. I know you're interviewing me, but yes. how did you start the podcast? Because I didn't get that. So I just wanted to, um, just getting in this, you know, you're on social media, which I was not on social media before I started this business. Okay. And, and I've shared this before. A friend of mine, she's a marketing, she was a marketing uh, teacher nice. for many years. She's nice. an assistant principal now. I'm nice. so glad to watch her. Um, growing and advancing in, in the field that I was in. I, I love it. Yes. She's been one of my biggest cheerleaders. This friend of mine has been, she designed my logo. Love she, she was telling me, leave the job, do this. Don't be scared. You know, she'll, she'll shake me when I need it. Just yeah. like my husband will snap out of it. You can you do this. Right. Yeah. You've got this. Mm -hmm. And she said, you need to get on social media. You mm -hmm. have to start making these connections with people. You don't exist in a bubble or a vacuum. Yes. So I got on social media, started meeting people, started developing this community of frienders, which I, I love that term. I love it too. I've never heard it, but I love it. Yes, I, I love that. And, you know, I'm just watching that community kind of grow. And as I'm looking at other people's, you know, posts and just having conversations with folks, the similarities between us, what they're going through, what I'm going through, the differences, you know, um, things that they're experiencing that they're handling differently than I did that mm -hmm. I'm like, well, hey, I didn't handle it that way. I could learn from, from this person. Mm -hmm. That really just sparked an interest in me to sit down with people and talk to them and just continue to grow this community that I'm so glad to be part of, yes. but also learn. I, I, I think that's, and just being a, a former teacher, I, I just, I love to learn. Yeah. I love to learn. Yes. And I, I feel like I've learned so much just sitting down talking with you things that I knew that I read on paper, mm -hmm. right. Or mm -hmm. on screen, I should say, I'm showing my age <laughs> on screen, on right. On, on my phone, 
things that I saw, you know, or, or I could infer yeah. from your posts and your website, but actually sitting and having the conversation that I'm having with you today, mm-hmm. it, it's just different. Yeah, and we're, we're friends now. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. really like, it, it might be a little deeper than that. We might be more than that. I would love that. Because I felt the vibe too. I'm so glad. You yeah, I, so, so that's why I'm doing this, yeah. you know? Yeah. It, I think it's it's worth it to make those connections and just, uh, and you also just don't know, you know, uh, what that connection could lead to. You really don't. Yes. And I think that's important too, right? Yeah. So it, it's a networking piece, but it's also, this is my, this is my professional development. Yes. I guess is how I, I, I would put it. Th- I this is that. how I, I feel like I'm growing professionally by sitting down and meeting people and learning from them. Well, thank you for bringing all your good vibes to me today because well, I definitely need them. There, I have moments when I'm like, Am I still really doing this? Yes. And I think, you know, the QVCs and the NBC, they all feel like wins, but it's for yeah. it, right? Yeah. I think when you came today and I did a call this morning with the other group, it was like, I felt reinvigorated. Good. If I said that right. Yes. Work. And I needed that. So thank you for being here and for like asking me about my next steps because I literally was working on some of this stuff last night. Before yeah. Came. It woke me up at 4 a.m., but I refused. I was like, I'm not getting up. Good. It's 4 a.m. Right. Boundaries. We, we talked about that I, before right. we started I, recording. I, no. Like, yes. It was very dark outside. Lay back down. Yes. And I'm glad I did because I would have been here way more sleepier, but I'm excited and I'm so, so grateful that you came and that we've been able to share this. Yeah, me that. too. So I'm going to go ahead and bring us back to the question okay. that I asked you at the beginning. Okay. If you had to come up with, if you mm-hmm. wanted to create mm-hmm. some kind of a signature drink, mm-hmm. can be alcoholic, non-alcoholic, it's up to you, or it could be an existing cocktail that you just think that that embodies who I am and my business. What would that be? So I was, I felt like I had my drink and then you mentioned the drink that we did with the champagne and cotton yes. candy. And I was like, nope, can't do that. Okay. She just mentioned it. And like, yes, that's a thing. It's yeah. So cool. I love champagne because I love bubbles and I love cotton candy. Yes. Obviously. Great combo. But then as you were just asking again, I thought about two drinks that I enjoyed recently at two different places that might be fun to like infuse and do something different mm-hmm. with cotton candy. So at the Crooked Hammock, okay. they have a peach drink that I think is super yummy. And I'm thinking we can just add a little bit of cotton candy to the top of that. Yes. And then, like, I like a mojito. And mint with cotton candy, like the mint with the sweet, might not be... I think it would work. It might work. Yes. So I'm thinking we'll go that way. I was going to lean into the champagne and cotton candy because it's classic and I yeah. can do that one. But we might go and cr- hit up Crooked Hammock and say, let's add some cotton candy. I love peach. that. All right. Well, we'll make a plan. We'll go to the Crooked Hammock and have this wait. peach drink. I can't wait. So if people wanted to find you, yeah. where do they find you? Give I'm, us all your information. Okay, so I'm learning that building an email list is extremely important. Okay. People are getting on me about that. So head to my website first. Okay. So you can be a part of my official community at caneconnectionsinc.com. Um, so you can find all of our cotton candy there, our pops, etc. I will likely be sharing our podcast when it is live on yes. that platform as well. And then you can find me on both Facebook and Instagram. Super easy. Candy Connections. Very easy. That's us. I love it. Well, again, thank you for having me in your home. Yeah. I've enjoyed this so much. Me too. And um, I, I know that we, we've, got a, we've got a friendship ahead yeah, of us, yeah, for is, sure. Yeah, we got a vibe here. Yeah, you we do. Me? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm so we do. Because you're right. You never know like how you're going to connect. And I definitely mm-hmm. just doing a lot more way beyond today. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Let's toast to... Um, a, the, a successful rest of 2024, yes. a successful launch of your podcast, yes. and um, just, you know, continuing to make connections with folks the way that we've done today mm-hmm. in the new year and just learn and grow and to stay positive. Please. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.